Hello, good morning. Hi everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Rita. Um, uh, I'm from Awet. And today we have a live session with a very special guest. Okay, let me just add her in. Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Waalaikumsalam. Good morning. Cik Puan Sarima. How Hello. are you? I'm good. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Can hear you All clearly. Right. You're looking good then. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm very excited. Um, Should I put a filter? Because I'm... Should I put a filter the whole conversation <laughs> to me? <laughs> Oh my no, God, you are you're beautiful that. enough. You are beautiful enough. You don't need a filter. This is the Kylie Apani Awe version. So, um, it, what's yeah, up? Yeah, that looks really Kylie. <laughs> Guam memang gua suka pagi-pagi bangun macam ni, ha? Oh, I woke up like that lah, kiranya. <laughs> Let me get rid of all these filters. We don't need it in our life section. You look good. You, you look good with the filters. You look lovely. You look so young. Apani. Oh, no, not really. I'm a bit sleepy. Um, the kids 24? are having online school. Ah, no, not really. <laughs> uh, almost reaching to the next series, actually. What do you mean? 30? No, 30. I have two kids already. Yeah. Yes. Do I know that? My mom had me at 21, okay? Zaman dulu kan, macam tak kisah kan? Like, yeah. tujuh, tujuh orang beranak by the age of 26. Gila. Amazing kan? Orang dulu dulu eh. <laughs> macam, macam mana tu? Keluar buat? Keluar buat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean they just do it lah. Anyway, Cik Puan Sarima, um, I I think not only myself but everyone else who is joining us today, they okay. are excited as I am. Kita orang semua excited nak cakap dengan you. We yeah. always see you on TV. Sekarang see you live here. Thank you. Um, it's unfortunate that we can't meet you in person, kan? Tak pernah, uh, Tapi Allah. bila, yeah, when I see you on IG, macam after do you, you do your fitness, kan? Macam your skin is like so glowy. I'm like, oh my god, jealousnya. It's like really a natural glow. Uh, okay, that is I don't wear a lot of um, foundation. I just pakai macam kalau ada jerawat. Kenapa I just put a little bit of concealer and then like my focus is mostly on my eyes. Tu je. Kalau tak, tak nampak, right. I'll be like, where is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> but you look good anyway. You Thank look you. good anyway. I'm 43 um, now. Can you believe it? No, I... Life starts at 40 anyway, it right? It does. Yeah, actually you're right. In many ways it did. Mm. Alhamdulillah. How, how do you feel being 43 at this, at this moment right now? Like when I was 23, I thought I was 43 and I behaved like that. Macam... Dah buat semua, I done skydiving, I got my black belt in karate, semua lah habiskan. I even trained to be a, a, an English language teacher tau. Imagine. <laughs> so jadi semua lah by 23. So by 43 now, I'm macam, what am I going to do now? It's like so chilled, life kan macam, no lah, I mean now I'm a mom kan. But I'm not like a, I wouldn't say typical, typical mom because there's no such thing as typical mom kan. I'm just really mm. like more relaxed now. Maybe it's because I've been right. in therapy for so long and I've done a lot of self-growth and then like, dah tak kisah lah pasal orang nak cakap apa. Do you know what I mean? Like you reach a yep. point like bila, ala kita tak nak membawang dan kita tak nak dengar orang membawang because we are women mm. and women ni yes. suka mengumpat perempuan lain and all that. So I don't, I don't buy into that anymore. You know what I mean? We need to support yep. each other. So I just feel so like macam now I just want to help other men and women um, and children, and especially now during a pandemic, that's why I, I'm working with Miasa as the patron, and I'm working with mental health, um, the mental health cause. Um, and I don't want to just be like another celebrity yang banyak bercakap pasal mental health, but bercakap tu senang, nak buat tu susah. So by being the patron, you know, I really am involved, and then I'm starting a coaching uh, training very soon. 
Right. So I will be able to actually train. I'll be um, certified as a celebrity coach, inshallah, mm-hmm. by December. Head Start Academy, right? Head Start Academy. Head Start is actually our business. It's for special needs, for autistic children and whatnot. And right. myself and my husband are, I'm the ambassador and investor. So you can check mm-hmm. out Head Start. Kalau ada... Uh, anak-anak yang istimewa Yang ada autism, ADHD Dan sebagainya Check out Head Start Academy We're going to be opening one in Kota Damansara soon uh, Dekat soon. Glow actually Glow insyaAllah tak lama lagi uh, But separately to that I'm going to be a trainer trainer So a motivational trainer and coach InsyaAllah tak lama lagi wow. So then I can take on clients So you can bore up with me And insyaAllah I can help you Discover your life goals Career goals and whatnot And health goals right. Tapi itu dalam right. December lah hmm. So that's what Inshallah. I'm doing now. Yeah Yeah, I think I think at this moment right now, that is your true calling. You want to help. You want to be the change. You are the change agent. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, I mean, that's what I started with. You know, Rida, I was I was a uh, I mean, I'm a psychology student, and that that was my passion initially to to be a psychologist. Sebenarnya, masa tahun sembilan belas sembilan puluh enam, when I was enrolled in college, I wanted to do that, and then my life took a different course. Nak cari rezeki as an artist. So I went in a different right. direction. Yeah. Yeah. When you mentioned about being an artist, I mean, you have been in the entertainment industry, the media. I mean, like for a solid 23 years, I think the camera just loves you, you know. Like with all your recognitions, your accolades, it's amazing. And, you know, I, I don't know how you do it. How do you find time doing all that? Because, you know, I'm sure you work long hours and, you know, being dedicated to doing yeah. what you do, yeah, yeah, being on camera and you know, I I understand that the hours are sometimes it can be crazy, right? And yeah. that was like 20 years back, you know, doing that for 23 years, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. What is it that you can do? I mean, dulu lagi dahsyat masa shooting, we didn't have like Instagram. There were no Insta famous people. Mana ada influencer dulu? Kalau nak jadi influencer, kena jadi orang yang bekerja. Dalam sesuatu bidang You actually have to be from an actual mm. industry So you couldn't be famous for being famous Back then So the only way you could get in Surat Kabar And on the radio Is if you actually achieve something lah um, And it couldn't be something controversial dulu Kalau buat benda controversial Lagi tak jadi famous So back then our challenges were to like We were like machines You know orang cakap pasal gig economy sekarang ni We were like the original right. gig economy artists and celebrities and performers because kita kerja uh, satu job demi satu job so kita line up our jobs and that's how we used to used to be and it still is like that. So macam tak ada protection langsung, kita tak ada sesiapa, tak ada um, you know kerja timing for work also macam 3 pagi sampai pukul 6 petang, tak makan, tak minum, tak tidur. It was like that's just the way life is. Kalau you nak dapat your payment, you have to go to work. And we we face a lot of things in in our industry, you know. I mean, today we're talking a bit about the past and how it shapes you again. So yep. my my past was like you just mentioned. It has been quite up and down and up and down. But you know that is part of life, kan? Kita tak lelah semua yes. up, kan? But yeah, working hours and as a celebrity, tak ada orang yang boleh protect kita. Mana ada health benefits ke apa? Kalau kena sexual mm. harassment ke apa, tak ada sesiapa yang kisah. Mm. Tak ada sesiapa yang membantu. So, kita kena cari rezeki je. And tak ada tempat untuk, you know, minta tolong. There's no Instagram, there's no Facebook. Yang kita mengharapkan media je. So, we just had the papers, mm. we had the radio. Itu pun kalau diorang sudi nak cover kita sebab ramai artis kan. So, we were fighting for attention. So, I learned a lot of skills actually sebagai artis. And up until I did the Sarima show like three years ago, um, I only did one season because masa tu I nak focus to having a baby. So, nak pregnant ni bukan senang tau. And Uh, mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, I had a child naturally. I mean, we didn't go for IVF. Tapi kena berusaha <laughs> nak dapat baby, Betul, kan? Yeah. So, I couldn't be shooting anymore. You know, sometimes kita orang shoot 18 jam and then stress on set and then tak boleh tak boleh mm. gemuk, tak boleh potong rambut, tak boleh warna rambut, tak boleh buat semua oh tak boleh God. buat. Ya, yeah, sebagai artis ni sebenarnya nampak macam glamour je. Tapi di sebalik tu, behind the scenes, you Quite know. Quite restricted juga. It's very restricted. What, what, what? The public see is actually after all the process yang restriction tu. Mm. And you know, kita tak ada jaminan kerja, kita tak ada, you know, apa ni. There's no, uh, v, there's no fund offered to us. Kita tak ada package, you know. Kalau hilang kerja, esok hilang. Kalau demam, I've been on set. Siapa kena pakai drip, you know. Like, 
So what, dehydrated? Wow. I pernah pakai drip going to work in my arm and then my tangan I suruh kat belakang dan kita shoot macam tu. Shoot oh sambil God. sambil ada drip kat tangan. When I was doing an international school, apa oh, Neil said, hi. Hi, Pak Neil. Oh my God, <laughs> Pak Neil is so my part of my success. Because the first, oh, AJL, hi, Neil. the first AJL I did with Pak Neil was the, the AJL that introduced me to most people and we had the best time. And then I don't know kenapa tak ada rezeki after that for me and Pak Neil to kerja together. Because I think sama kepala, maybe the universe cannot handle us. We're both like <laughs> too much good. But um, he, know, he knows, he's the senior. I mean, Pak Neil is like, I don't know, Pak Neil is a machine good. I'm not sure. Sebab dia, <laughs> dia punya kerja, but his work ethics are amazing. So there are people that, you know, I learned from on the way. Like for example, um, Dato' Aznil. So, and then I observe, you know, how they work, their punya work ethics, macam mana dia orang boleh, you know, have the discipline. And you learn, you must always learn. Sekarang ni pun kita kerja. Walaupun kita, you know, uh, how you say, you, you can motivate others, but you're still learning. And that's why I want to become a trainer in, in, and help people with mental health sekarang ni. Mm, panjang right. pula jawapan. <laughs> Uh, but when you say help, I mean, it's not only, you know, it's not only that because I see you are involved with so many amazing causes, kan? Biasa, and then, um, you know, with your background in psychology, um, now that you are going to be involved in Head Start, I mean, yeah. oh my God, uh, I don't know how you find the time, the energy, you know, and you're a mom right now yeah. to a beautiful daughter, you know, and when you said about getting pregnant, it's not easy getting there. I mean, everyone has their own journey, Betul? kan? Betul. So, uh, macam for yourself, I mean, if you don't mind sharing, kan, macam on a personal level, that, that journey towards becoming a mom, um, you know, and after that, what, what happened actually? Did you actually experience anything unpleasant ke? No, I mean, you I know, like, lot, like, you see, I never thought I would be a mom, but umur 40, and then, you know, I got married to my husband at 36. So, guys, girls, don't worry. Don't rush into things. You know, when it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be. Jodoh takkan kemana. It really is true. So, you know, I learned a lot from my previous experience. And then when you find the right one, Rita, you know it's the right one. Because you know how you know it's the right one? Because tak ada drama lagi. Masa kita muda, kita kejar drama tau. Macam film lah kan? Film, telenovela. Siapa gaduh, siapa yang boleh buktikan dia sayang kat kita, bergaduh, datang <laughs> come back together, gaduh, merajuk, come back together. All this, dia akan berakhir bila kita jumpa the one. So, a lot of yeah. people think that stability and like, you know, calmness is something boring or a bad sign. But I feel that is a sign of maturity. Kita dah matang. Kita tak ada masa nak gaduh, mm. tak ada masa nak merajuk and all this. So, you learn a lesson. And then, I, I did not want to be a mom for a long time because bekerja, bekerja, bekerja. And I just thought one. success when your definition was by awards, glamour, recognition, numbers on Instagram, numbers on Facebook. Dulu, numbers of letters lah yang datang ke studio kan. Panggilan yang dapat. Now it's like Instagram, how famous you yeah. are kan. But I tell you something, success is only defined by how you define your success every day. And dia akan berubah. Yes. Setiap pagi kita ada sesuatu yang kita nak buat. Kalau kita achieve benda tu, rasa juga sukses yang sama. Tak semestinya sukses tu kita dapat uh, award yes. ataupun kita dapat you know promotion. Sukses tu datang dari kepuasan setiap hari tu. Like for me hmm, today, so sukses is bila I duduk with my daughter and then dia, dia, dia peluk mami. Dari situ, I rasa, oh my god, perasaan ni lebih dari apa, how would you say, like, it feels better than winning an AIM award. Honestly. True, it's serious. It's so, success is only defined by your definition every day, I would say that. Mm-hmm. And when when we had her, I was 41, okay? 41-year-old mummy, ramai yang panggil geriatric mom, tapi... <laughs> tak adalah geriatric sangat, kan? Of yeah. course, there are the physical risks. But Alhamdulillah, she was born and, and she's healthy and she's two years old now. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Yang difficultnya cuma nak adjust my life, Rita. Dari seseorang yang selalu independent and thinking about myself, like what am I going to do today? What's the next course I'm going to do? To apa yang Sofia nak hari ni? What do I need to do for my husband? What do I need to do for Sofia? How do I make her happy today? Itu dia punya shift. Bila kita berhenti hmm. fikir pasal diri sendiri and we, we, we think about someone else, eh, susah. And kita ada battle Betul. internally. Macam, eh, adakah aku ni sekarang terlalu apa, um, take care pasal orang lain and then neglect diri sendiri. That's the challenge. If right. you're asking me what's the hard part. The right. internal Tapi battle. Tapi sebenarnya, 
It's true. I mean, um, that challenge I think all of us face kan. Yeah. Uh, but in order for us to take care of others, kita pun kena jaga diri kita sendiri. We yes. have to practice self-care. You know? Right? We have to practice self-care, self-love. And I think macam sekarang ni banyak sangat, you know, all these depressing cases, all these suicidal cases. And it, it's very depressing because as much as you don't want to know, you have to know. You yeah. have to care. You know, so um, that's the reason why, I mean, we are in awe that you are in Miasa, you know, um, macam uh, getting to know all these problems, you know, approaching because it's a very taboo subject, it's a very sensitive subject. Yeah. Um, for yourself, Sangat. macam how, uh, how do you bring yourself as a patron to Miasa and actually what does Miasa do? Maybe you want to share with all of us. Okay, so um, obviously being an artist for 20-something years, dia macam mengejar impian, mengejar, mengejar, glamour, success, do it, do it because I wanted to help my family. So it wasn't just right. for me. I wanted to make sure that I could save and then, you know, contribute back something to my parents. That's why I did it because I, I don't come from a rich background. Um, so there was a lot of driving factors that kept me going for 20-something years. Tapi sambil I kerja, I belajar. I, I sambung belajar. So I got my psychology associate's degree. Alhamdulillah. 13 tahun nak belajar baru dapat. Tapi wow. dia lambat asalkan dapat, right? Um, Finally, and, yes, and I and I and, and I did a lot, but the passion to mental health masih ada, and I can share a little bit, like mungkin a little bit might help people, but I don't like to talk too much about myself. I want to know about other people more now. Um, I had postnatal depression lepas bersalin, kemurungan selepas bersalin, di mana selama tiga empat bulan tu saya tak boleh keluar rumah, menggeletar, tak boleh makan, tak boleh tidur, berat turun, and then I tak boleh nak uh, tak ada ras tak ada tak boleh nak fokus and then setiap hari menangis, menangis, menangis and then a lot of people saat ni biasa lepas lepas bersalin you have baby blues kan Salin. but mm. ni bukan baby blues dah, ni dah baby black dah dia sangat ke dalam kumburungan tu rasa macam mungkin ini adalah pengakhiran hidup saya sampai ke situ <gasps> ah. okay. sampai ke tahap mm. yang kita akan berfikir ok mungkin kita dah sampai ke hujung pangkal dan Ya Allah ya Tuhanku kalau nak ambil saya ambil saya sekarang please sebab saya rela mm. saya tak ada daripada saya diseksa dalam minda you know in your mind mm. mental mm. torture so dari situ because I know about psychology Alhamdulillah ada support system I sought out help bukan saja dari doktor right. and then I had to take ubat for a very short period of time, Alhamdulillah, untuk balancekan, oh, seimbangkan balik my mind. Uh, and then I felt okay after that. Dengan peer I support, dengan bantuan um, my my ustaz, dengan exercise, dengan support of my husband. Alhamdulillah, I have a so very supportive husband. Dan saya faham, tak ramai yang ada sokongan dari keluarga. Betul. And that is why hmm. I agreed to be the patron of Miasa. Supaya kita ni boleh bantu orang lain yang dalam situasi gelap tu rasa macam putus harapan macam that's it. Lebih lagi dengan pandemic right now and like people losing mm. their jobs, there's domestic abuse Rita, there is yeah. child abuse, everything mm. is going haywire right now. And yeah. as a result of that, people are feeling lost, hopeless. So Miasa is a non-governmental organization. I was working with them for a while. Uh, unofficially mm. and then they invited me to be the patron. Patron ni bermaksud kita seperti ambassador. Kita menyumbang secara apa orang kata you know uh, we contribute our time, our effort and our um, our let's say public figure assist them to get mm. some marketing. I can hear some noise. I'm sorry Rita. Is it your phone? Oh, oh, oh. Ke, I'm not sure. Dia macam ada <laughs> oh, okay. But um, just <laughs> to let you know, takut orang lain dengar. But um, yeah, so Miasa, we have lots of things. We have services untuk B40. We give them food, uh, essential services, which are hygiene products. We have social synergy platform di mana mm. uh, Miasa boleh bantu dengan people who are in debt. We can help people. Um, there are agencies that are within Miasa that are willing to help people to to get training, to upskill, etc. Then kita ada circle of uh, care, circle time setiap bulan. Uh, Miasa juga ada art therapy, dance therapy. Sekarang ni online pun ada. And kita ada counselling mm. dan juga bantuan uh, spiritual. So dia holistic assistance and it's peer um, led, it's peer uh, created by Puan Anita Bubaka and it's peer, it's a peer driven NGO. And I also work closely with other NGOs of course, kan? Um, even oh, though I'm the yes. patron of Miasa, we awas, 
awareness against suicide yes. dan sebagainya. Um, because it, it needs a holistic environment, ecosystem yes. to support everyone. That's what right. I do right now. Right. I uh, the, the word that comes up to me is, number one is help. Hmm. It's, it's about helping others and, you know, when you seek help, actually you in, you know, it indirectly kan, macam, because uh, you know how it feels. You went through that yeah. journey kan. Uh, so we we have more compassion. Betul. We have more, kita lebih memahami, lebih uh, macam mana orang cakap kan. Sebab ramai orang susah sebenarnya sekarang ni. Yeah. Just like you said, it needs a holistic uh, approach. Uh, ada orang dia susah dari segi kewangan. Ada, ada orang susah dari segi... Um, Uh, motivation Betul. kan ada orang dia macam-macam jenis susah macam-macam jenis kan? kesusahan tetapi yeah, satu betul. satu perkataan tu mungkin help tetapi lebih daripada help adalah untuk memberi sokongan sebab dalam setiap orang tu dia mampu membantu diri sendiri cuma pada waktu tu dia tak nampak tak kelihatan uh, di mana sebenarnya arus yang dia sepatutnya ke situ untuk mendapatkan bantuan. Jadi dengan NGO seperti Miasa kita ada crisis hotline, uh, awas ada WhatsApp dia. You know only a few days ago there was a crisis, there was a situation yang sangat menyedihkan. Um, there was uh, a case of suicide and um, the WhatsApp was there to assist the family and the people who are bereaving yang ketinggalan ya. So one thing that I really want to do as part of being a patron of Miasa and as a mental health advocate and inshallah as a trainer nanti, as a coach for people, a transformative coach is I want to help them to let go of the stigma. Stigma yang kita letak pada diri sendiri ni sebenarnya. Sebab stigma yang kita ada pada orang lain yang kita Uh, rasa macam eh dia ni kenapa ataupun uh, orang ni gila ataupun membunuh diri tu terus sebab iman iman tak cukup dan sebagainya itu adalah stigma yang kita simpan in ourselves sebenarnya bila kita tak boleh menghadapi diri sendiri dan kita tak boleh accept diri kita ni sebagai seorang manusia dengan kekurangan dan kelebihan kita akan sebegitu juga dengan orang lain. Do you know what I mean? So hmm. what we hmm. want at Niasa, the target is a zero stigma society. And some of the things yeah. we're trying to do, um, Rita, is decriminalize suicide. We try, uh, you know, um, our our founder is fighting very hard to change the policy. Um, with the other NGOs, there is a lot of voices to change the code because. Kalau kita criminalize, continue to criminalize suicide attempt, lagi yang akan menyorok, lagi yang tak reported dan lagi yang akan suffer. And um, we need to also assist people who are um, peers also to be able to help other peers. So that's something that we do at Miasa with Circle Time and the support system. Kita ada Orchid Clubhouse tapi sekarang ni tak boleh pergi lah because obviously... Um, you know, with the MCO. But there is a lot of support that is given holistically. Um, so it's support rather than help. Right. Because kita, if we help someone, you disempower the person. Nanti orang yeah. tu cari kita je. Untuk cari bantuan, kena cari kita je. Padahal dalam diri mm. dia, dia yang kena buat, uh, you know, the, the decision. Dia yang kena tinggalkan right. situasi tu. Dia yang kena upskill. Especially, especially zaman sekarang. Nak, nak cari kerja susah. So what can we do? We can upskill ourselves right. online. We can wake up and go with the flow of digitalization. Dan macam-macam yeah. lagi, you know. Mm. But it's support. It's, it's support. I understand because um, when we go back to mental health, it all is all here mental, kan? So from here, it goes down here. Mm. So uh, I think when it starts from a big why, bila orang ada something that they are fighting for, yeah. satu tujuan yang kuat untuk dia berubah. Yeah. Untuk the change. I want to make that change. You know, mm. I'm tired of being like this. Mm. Uh, and I think when Miasa comes in to support that, I think it's it's amazing because betul. Sometimes bukan kita nak bagi tahu dia untuk buat apa. Tak. Dia sendiri tahu. Betul? Tapi dia perlukan semangat tu untuk okay. How do I move on? How yes. do I move forward? Sometimes yeah, the first so, step je tu. The first step yang kita nak buat tu yang macam rasa takut. Dan lebih selesa hmm. dengan comfort zone. Lebih selesa, let's say, okay, for example, like, you know, when I wanted to get into fitness dulu, badan, bukan nak kata saya besar sangat ke apa, tapi tak healthy. The first step to get healthy tu, kita kena lepaskan semua belief system ataupun kepercayaan tentang diri kita sebelum kita boleh pergi ke gym, sebelum kita boleh makan dengan lebih sihat, sebelum kita nak pergi socialize. Apa sebenarnya kepercayaan pada diri kita sendiri tu yang membunuh apa self-esteem kita tu? 
So kita kena lepaskan tu. So that's what I want to do as a coach insyaAllah. And I want to help people to be able to 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 realize what is the belief system dalam diri kita ni yang 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 sebenarnya hold us back ni. Why is somebody right. in a relationship yang abusive? Let's say for example. We've all been there. Sama ada kita yang abuse hmm. ke kita yang di-abuse. Manusia kan? Betul. So hmm. kenapa kita berada dalam situasi tu? Adakah salah orang itu sahaja ataupun kita juga memainkan peranan untuk apa orang kata it's like a it's like a what would you say it's a dependency macam sama-sama sebenarnya ada masalah. So sama-sama mencari tempat selamat dengan dalam masalah tu so dia tak boleh dia tak boleh elok dia tak boleh baik sebab dua-dua. Hmm. So it requires a shift in your whole belief system about yourself like I deserve a better hmm. life. I deserve a better situation for me. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't need to suffer yeah. anymore. Dari situ je baru kita boleh bergerak. Because semua Betul. orang boleh cari alasan. I used to find excuses all the time for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, alasan demi alasan demi alasan. Bila kita let go alasan tu, mm. then siapa nak jawab? Kita Betul. jawab. Betul. You know, so actually it's, support it's, tu. Yeah. Betul. I mean, it's actually is is easy to say tapi bila orang nak buat tu, it's not easy. I mean, It's just like they want to go through that breakthrough tau. This manya is just it's just me against myself. You know, bukan orang lain. It's it's all in you. Jadi you kena have that you know once you break through then you can see more clarity. Betul? Saya rasa uh, sebab kadang-kadang itulah memang people just need that nudge that a bit that push sikit kan? Yes. So having a support system around you I mean it really really helps lah. It does. And then it's- And then we cannot force people. A lot of people message me, mm-hmm. you know, um, Kak Sarima, uh, my mother or my father or my spouse or my friend, what ni 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 kat saya? What can I do to make them change? Let me tell you something. We cannot make people change. You know, there mm-hmm. is a saying, you know, pepatah orang kata, you can drag a horse but you can't force it to drink the water. But I tell you something, you can't even drag the horse. The horse needs to go itself. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if the yeah. horse doesn't go itself, Once it gets to the water, you part sebun dia akan tendang kita. Yeah, so betul. you you need to you need a person needs to want something themselves, and when they want something themselves, it's more long lasting. And and yeah. so what I see now is you know you were talking Rita pasal you know um awareness within yourself. But sekarang ni dengan pandemic ramai yang tak ada kerja, tak ada makanan, tak ada tempat tidur pun. Sebelum dia orang nak fikir pasal you know improving themselves ke perubahan tu, dia nak cari makan pun susah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not. Too. I'm not in my own bubble. I see it. I get the DMs every day, and I know who's who's hurting themselves. I know the families where people are passing away. Even I have close friends and people I know that have passed away. Cuma right. kita tak cakap masa benda tu kan? Sometimes you know we Betul. we just keep it to ourselves because I'm so busy trying to do other things. But I think people right now they need the stability, the stability to calm down. You know, and that is where you can get help with associations like macam Miasa and what not befrienders so that you can at least calm your brain down and then you can think of the next steps to take for yourself and your family. Because kalau kita tak stable, kita tak relax, kita akan buat impulsive decision tau. You know, yeah. dari situlah lagi masalah kita. Makin lama makin ada mistake. Dia macam domino effect. So hmm. I think mental health is very important right now. Of course, financial is so important. And people say, I don't have money to get mental health. But it's not about money. There are NGOs that provide this for free. Yeah. Okay. And, That's you know, cool. inshallah, when I am uh, fully capable after December, I will be helping people as well. So the help yeah. is out there. Cuma kita kena cari lah bantuan tu kan. So so okay. right now, my, my, my focus is on how we can support each other as Malaysians. Because banyak sangat case self harm harming children harming harming yeah. each other and this is not because the person is a bad person this is because the person has lost touch with themselves dah and they want to end the pain not themselves sebenarnya mana ada ibu yang nak bunuh anak dia sendiri mana ada orang yang nak bunuh diri sendiri dia nak bunuh Betul. sakit tu dia nak bunuh perasaan yang ada tu so the difficulty is trying to separate the the symptoms from the person a person with mental health issues is not the mental health issue They are a person with the issue, with the condition. So dari situlah yang kita kena faham as a society. Kita selalu join this together. Orang itu adalah schizophrenia. Orang itu adalah gila. Bukan. Itu adalah simptom disebabkan trauma ataupun 
lain-lain uh, apa orang kata sebab dan yang menjadikan dia sebegitu bio, psycho, social, spiritual empat-empat ni kena jaga kalau tak, hmm. dia tak seimbang ada sesuatu yang akan keluar nanti tak cukup tidur, tak boleh makan, terlalu berat terlalu kurus uh, relationship yang abusive ataupun kita abuse orang lain so dia akan efek so dari situlah hmm. orang menjadi penagih dadah, arak Uh, makan terlalu banyak eating disorders because I've been there I've been there I had eating disorders I've had the whole shebang so semua dah lalui so mm. when I talk I, I'm not talking about it theoretically I've lived it and many of the people in Miasa all of them are peers yang pernah lived it and for you you yourself for example I'm sure in your life you've experienced some mental health challenges Yep, that's true, that's true. I mean, on a personal level, like, you know, growing up, um, if you go, I, I always believe that everything starts from home. Yeah. You know, so, um, um, macam orang cakap lah, budak adalah kain putih yang you curakkan. Jadi, dia very, dia tak berdosa, dia kosong. You know, it's how you curakkan dia. So, if you, you, if you, I mean, some people, they are unfortunate to come from, um, maybe a broken family, you know, but some emerge better later on in life, uh, but some do not. So I think um, when you said that, you know, it's the, the four things that people have to know is, uh, is it either comes from you and also your environment. Now, is, is that breakthrough yang you nak, you know, come to realization, what is your big why? Why am I doing something? Who is it Betul. for? You know, it's for me that I I want to succeed. I want to be a successful person. And again, success uh, depends on you know each and every one of us the level of success. So, but um, not to say that we don't face adversities. Kita semua hadapi cabaran. You know, semua. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. I mean, Betul. any part of the world now that semua orang pun tengah menghadapi pandemik ni. So, um, it's but it's important every step of the way to kita dapat support. Mm-hmm. kan macam sometimes you know tau macam you you know the things that you need to do is all you know number yes. satu saya kena buat you, you you know at the back of your mind but to do it is like sometimes you need that push you need that support sometimes yes. you know you are doing a good job you just need someone to pat on the back you're doing yeah. fine go for it you know, sometimes a simple word can change a lot of things you know, you know, you so, know as you as you're speaking it just reminded me you know when you said a pat on the back too When you said that, I just wanted to share with you and everybody, I, I'm very much a big follower of a, a physician and a very famous speaker called Gabor Mate. Dr. Gabor mm-hmm. Mate. Um, he has many books in the realm of hungry ghosts dan sebagainya and the body never lies. And recently, he just came out with a movie called The Wisdom of Trauma. Aduh, bila tengok ni barulah kita faham. You know, a lot of people say it's a tabata blanca, like when you're born, you're a blank slate, as you mentioned, kan? Tetapi, kan, there is a lot of research that says what happens even in the womb yes, true. will actually affect the lifespan of a child later. Yep. Dari dalam the womb itself. Kalau seorang ibu tu stress, kalau seorang ibu tu menghadapi trauma ataupun catastrophe, dia akan efek pada anak dia. Bukan secara deliberately. Dia akan jadi. Just naturally. Macam tu. There was a study on the 9-11 effects on um, children born after 9-11 when the parents were pregnant. Mm-hmm. And if you look at this study, many of the children who were born when the mothers were pregnant during the 9-11 situation in America, in New York, had many, many developmental issues after that. Mm-hmm. That's not a coincidence. That is actually a scientific, um, you know, you could look at that as, as from a scientific perspective. So there's much research and, and they talk about childhood adverse situations, kan? So the more childhood adverse situations that you face, the more developmental problems and the more the rate of addiction or suicide later in your life. And this is something I studied in great depth. I'm very curious about it. Because a lot of people, dia, kita suka tengok penghujung dia tau. Pada pangkat penghujung tu, mm-hmm. macam orang ni adalah seorang addict. Orang ini adalah seorang yang telah memukul ataupun mendera anak dia. Lepas lepas tu, kita akan menghukum. Disebabkan stigma Betul. stigma dan tidak cukup education. Tidak cukup education dalam kesihatan mental. Untuk memahami sebab. So, kalau kita sebagai masyarakat, kita tak faham sebab dia, dia akan berulang. 
You know, it's like Betul. kita kena potong dekat akar tu because the situation that's causing this to happen needs to end. Yep. Kalau tak kita asyik treat hmm. dia punya symptom, symptom, symptom je, dia hmm. sampai bila-bila akan berlaku. So we can't keep putting plasters on this. So the the question and what I learned from from the Wisdom of Trauma movie, for example, and my studies in psychology and working as a patron and working with uh, Miasa, I was, is people are in pain due to many different reasons, like you said just now. It can be upbringing. It can be uh, not no connection to a bigger spiritual purpose. It can be the environment of friends or family that you could support. It can be chemical. It can be genetics. But sometimes, if you look at it simply, the whole thing plays an impact. Even how you were in your mother's womb. Yeah, what affected your mother masa tu. So, kita ni sebenarnya, the only thing yang kita mampu nak buat adalah bergerak dari sekarang. So, kita bergerak dari sekarang. So, you got to ask yourself, where am I now? Where do I want to be? What's stopping me from being there? Between there and now, kita work backwards. Kena hmm. tengok. I had to change a lot of my friends. I had to change my job to get mm. healthy. And just now, Rita, you mentioned dia datang dari sini ke sini, kan? Sebenarnya dia yeah. datang dari sini ke sini. Ke sini. Sebab sini maksudnya, bila I cakap sini bukan pasal hati, romantic idea, cinta. Maksudnya, kepercayaan yang asas tu tentang diri kita. Dari sini. Dari kecil lagi. Sebelum kita pandai mm-hmm. bercakap pun, kita dah ada kepercayaan tentang diri kita. And research mm. shows that children form a sense of self and who they are long before they can speak. The first right. three years of a child, dia dah tahu dah dengan macam mana cara pembesaran dia, macam mana ibu bapa dia punya interaksi, dia dah faham dunia ni macam mana, dunia ni selamat ke tak selamat. Dari sini, mm. baru kita boleh form dalam otak That's kita true. the mental apa orang kata, the consciousness and the ability to communicate tu datang dan badan kita berjalan ke depan. Mm. So we need to take care of children. But as adults now, soalannya, who's going to take care of us? Betul tak? So Betul. as women women out there, men out there, you need to start taking care of the young you again. So the child inside mm. of us is still there. Cuma umur je yang bergerak. Tapi jiwa mm. kita ni, dalam ni siapa ni, dia sama je. And if mm-hmm. there is beliefs kat dalam ni yang no longer serve us, kita kena lepaskan. Do you know what I mean? So if you grew mm-hmm. up believing that, you know, Rita believe I'm not good enough, no one will love me. Even though you tak sedar as a person in your adult now, you tak sedar. Tapi bal- jalan, skrip tu berjalan tau. Skrip tu dah ada, mm-hmm. dia dah dalam sangat. So semua yang kita lakukan berdasarkan skrip tu. So kita cari partner mm-hmm. yang akan tigakan kita. Kita cari kerja yang kita kena pecat. Last-last sekali, berbalik pada skrip yang sama. Betul. Betul. It's a very vicious cycle sebenarnya kan? So, kena Kalau ubah dari ilang. sini. Kepercayaan hmm. pada diri kita ni, baru kita faham. Bila faham ke atas ni, baru jalan. Mulut kita bergerak, tangan kita dan kita ke depan. Boleh minta bantuan, boleh ke miasa, boleh ke NGO, boleh cari um, uh, hobi ataupun ubah hidup kita. To change, you've got to have that deep awareness inside. Now, I did not have that before. I ada kat sini je. Okay, sorry, Ma, you need to go and do this. You need to go do that. You need to go, go, go. Perkataan dia, go and do, go and do. Tapi saya tak pernah, sorry, Ma, you need to look at inside yourself. Padahal sibuk buat, buat, buat. Kalau kita sibuk buat je, kita tak faham kenapa kita buat benda tu. And then kita akan ulang hmm. selalu. The same mistakes. Yeah, when you say, uh, you know, you are asking yourself tu, itulah macam memang bila kita buat self-reflection kan, kadang-kadang kita... Um, kita lalu hidup ni macam autopilot tau. Betul. Kita ah uh, kita grow up masuk sekolah, kita masuk sekolah rendah, kita masuk sekolah menengah, kita masuk universiti, kita kahwin, kita ada anak, kita uh, go on to the next one lah. I mean like it's just an autopilot. Yes. I do what I have to do. Yeah. You know? So in between tu kalau macam uh, you don't get that support or you yourself tak ada that big why, memang it's just a wish, wish Vicious cycle susah. Betul. Betul. Cycles. So macam um, I was, you know, sometimes I I I have to agree that I I am guilty like that. Um, yang, you know, um, when kids they tick you off sometimes because my kids ni doang dah sekolah. One oh, is standard yes. one. Ah, uh, you know, one is standard four. So we when they don't get to your way, you macam um, you can get impatient tau. 
So um, I was reading this article um, like uh, it was saying sebenarnya orang Malaysia ni dia macam people always compare. Kenapa anak orang putih ni you tell oh. they can listen. Okay. You, they will listen. You know but Malaysian kids why do you have to yell? You know hmm. but I think it's not only in Malaysia. It's a universal thing. It's, hmm. it's that it, sometimes I do ask myself is it because how I grew up? that you know when how i'm not blaming anyone again Betul. it's just a self reflection it's a self reflection that macam do, do i yell at my kids is because is how i grew up hmm. or you know um i don't have that that ability to become bersabar ke oh, when actually okay. i can tell them nicely so is again when you go autopilot you macam sibuk buat ni sibuk buat tu and you know when you're in that chaos lah kononnya oh chaos personal yes, chaos. Yes. Betul? You macam boleh tak jangan kacau mama? I mean can you go in, you, you just stand Boleh to, tak jangan um, jadi gila sekarang ni? <laughs> ha macam tu. Macam boleh tak masuk kelas? Boleh tak mandi? It's like it's hmm. every day is the same thing. It's like a broken record tau. Hmm. You macam kenapa mama ulang benda ni tiap-tiap hari? I mean, Faham? It's, it's, okay. it's a given but okay. um again uh, it can it can come from different aspects. It's like, is it me? Uh, those four things lah you mentioned. No, it, now it dawns, it dawns to me. Macam, uh, is these four aspects, you know, um, m- mungkin sometimes you just have to sit down. Okay, let me absorb all this. Okay. Now kids, pergi mandi sekarang. <laughs> Dengan pergi suara tu. Okay. Now kids, pergi mandi sekarang boleh. <laughs> I know. Boleh. I know, I know what you so, mean. Um, Yeah, you know, you know, I mean like um, maybe other people have other, they, their own journey lah, kan? Um, and when you say macam, it's those four aspects, it it kept me thinking because I read this article, kan? I always wonder tau, how come a person can become a killer? It's like, uh, how can you actually get yourself to kill or right. kill yourself or anything for that matter? So I read that um, there was this one case in, I think it was in the US, this journalist he went to dia pergi kat penjara dia pergi interview this uh, this convict he's a teenager tau so uh, he wanted to know why you kill your grandma i mean like why, why? is your family you know yeah. so uh, when you say life starts from the womb it's true because when he was in his mom's tummy the mom drank she um she took drugs so um indirectly it's like creating a monster Sebelum dia lahir lagi. Jadi bila dia lahir tu dia dia dah tak ada perasaan. It's uh-huh. is nothing. You know. So um, I think compassion plays a huge role. Yeah. Kadang-kadang kita nampak orang tu sempurna tapi kita tak tahu apa yang dia dah lalui. Yeah. Apa yang sebenarnya you know. Dia dia personal journey um, or whatever lah dia professional journey but I think it's more on profession, personal journey lah. Yes. So kalau kita tak cuba untuk memahami orang Memang kita kita akan ada stigma tu sampai Itulah. bila-bila. Stigma tu tak akan berakhir. Hmm. You know, you mentioned, I just want to ulang, it's biopsychosocial spiritual. So back to the simple thing first about being a mum, kenapa kita triggered and then about the killer or politicians yang kita, like for example, a lot of people say, how can Donald Trump or or Hitler or anyone be like that, kan? Yeah. You look at their childhood. You look at their punya self-belief tu. Dari mana datanya asas dia orang membesar? And also when you talked about the the child in 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 prison, uh, the the man in prison, kenapa dia boleh bunuh nenek dia, for example? I say to you, the simple thing is he killed himself a long time ago dah sebenarnya. Bukan dia yang bunuh diri dia, let me correct myself. He does not feel alive to himself. Because kita boleh offer kat manusia lain apa yang kita dah ada dalam diri kita. So kalau kita sendiri tak tak rasa macam kita ni ada harga, tak ada value, kita akan treat hmm. semua macam tu juga. So if you look at people that are mistreating other people, you can see very clearly they have no love and compassion for themselves sebenarnya. Walaupun nampak kaya ke apa ke, status dia apa ke, Tan Sri ke Datuk ke, Tan Donald Trump ke siapa ke, whoever ke, famous. There's something in their life that they don't they don't love themselves actually. And you, if you look back, we're not here to blame parents. We are parents too. Our parents only did what they know what to do. We only know what to do based on what we learn, betul tak? So we are not we are not blaming anyone. We only can work from a place of understanding, aja. 
So for example, semalam, Sofia, dia tiba-tiba nak tantrum on the ground. I've never seen her throw tantrum sampai dia menjurit macam-macam, macam kena dera. I was like, Sam, why are you doing that? Okay, so I had to calm down in myself and I was like, okay, what's going on in me? So I realized it's not about her screaming. Okay, screaming is sakit telinga, but that's not the issue. <laughs> the issue is what inside of me sebenarnya yang trigger sangat ni sampai I affected dengan dia punya screaming. Kenapa, as you said, some parents boleh macam calm, anak dia calm. Hey, but let me tell you, dia calm, tapi ada juga abusive yang secara diam. Ada yang macam tak, tak kisah pasal anak dia, diam je. So, anak dia pun jadi diam sebab nak mengikut je. Padahal dalam diri ni macam makan hati ni macam Mommy, Daddy mm-hmm. don't love me. So, I'm just going to be a perfect girl and perfect boy sebab tak nak upset the balance. Nampak yes. macam calm but don't be fooled. Not 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 everything we see is as it seems. So, bila bila Sofia menjerit tu, I had to tell myself, actually, I sebenarnya yang rasa macam myself, my in, inner child ni yang sedih ni sebenarnya. Because mm. I know when I was small pun, I menjerit, of course, but I cannot remember kan. Masa kita kecil, dah lupa. So, what yeah. is coming up in me? I rasa helpless ni sebenarnya. Macam, apa yang boleh buat ni? And some parents, they go straight to their punya familiar. Sama ada tarik anak dia ke, pukul ke, mm. marah ke, shut up ke apa, keluar kan. And then menyesal lah ke that. Because sebenarnya yang keluar tu kata-kata yang desperation dia dah dia dah hilang kontrol dengan diri dia sendiri. Bukan pasal anak dia. Hari ni pasal hmm. anak dia. Esok pasal suami isteri. Next day pasal boss. It's all Tak coming habis. from your own self actually. So we cannot yeah. beat ourselves up for it. But what we can do is we can look internally and ask myself, okay, is Sophia screaming? Is it because of Sophia screaming? Is she to blame because how I feel sekarang ni? So I stood there very calmly, tak susah. And and I just said, Zaya, I'm here. When you're finished screaming, mommy's here. And I'm very sad because you're sad. And then you're diam tau. And I was like, eh? Dia faham ke? How can she understand? Mm. Tapi dia bukan faham the words. Dia faham tonasi. Macam, okay, mommy dengar. I, mommy tak marah. And then mommy tak menyalahkan mm. saya. Sebab dia pun frustrated about something. So yeah. I had compassion for me. Because I know kalau I marah dia, I pula yang sedih nanti. Betul tak? Mm-hmm. Kita yang Betul. menyesal. So kita kena sayang diri kita. So benda yang kita buat tu tak macam self-sabotage diri kita nanti. Kita menjerit, Betul. kita buat sesuatu lepas tu menyesal. Siapa yang sakit in the end? Kita. So the best mm-hmm. way is to become, senang nak cakap, susah nak buat. I know. But I have to work with that. Now so every time she cries, I have to tell myself, Sorry Ma, it's not about you. You're not a failure. You're not a failure as a mother. Your child is not a failure. That's just your belief system. Semua kena perfect. Anak tak boleh menjerit. Nanti malu, malu. So bila kita ubah, anak kita akan ubah. So it does come from an internal place. And about the prison, I'll share something else with you. You know, I know we don't have much time, but there is a program. And if you watch The Wizard of Trauma, there was a research that they did. They, there, there is a group of people who went to the prisons and they spoke to the prisoners yang murderer, rapist dan sebagainya yang kita kata ni, ni memang lah hopeless case lah jenis-jenis manusia yeah. ni lah kononnya and when they really ask them pasal dia punya regret and ask them more importantly what happened in their life sebenarnya that caused the pain because bila seseorang tu hilang pada diri dia dia akan hilang pada orang lain maksudnya if you're not there for yourself you won't care what you do to other people dan dari situlah, dari kecil kita kena jaga anak-anak kita supaya dia, bukan bukan nak kata kita kena baby them but we must equip them to understand sedih tu normal, marah tu normal. Uh, yeah. Cuma cara kita sedih, cara kita marah tu, tu je yang kita kena ajar. Ajar bukan dengan perkataan, ajar dengan cara kita yang menjerit. Engkau ni jangan menjerit, tapi kita yang menjerit. <laughs> You know, so kita, you know, sometimes we don't practice what we preach. Or, hmm. pukul anak. Hey, why did you do that? Why did you smack your cousin? Kita juga yang pukul. Betul. So, we're not teaching in that sense, you know. So, we can only hmm. show a child. Kalau tak, dia, dia shrink. Anak anak tu akan shrink jadi kecil. Pada diri dia macam, semua yang aku buat salah. Semua yang aku buat salah. Aku ni, I'm useless. I'm useless. I'm useless. I'm useless. Ah, uh, muncullah narcissistic personality tu nanti. Oh, dia nak tunjuk hmm. pada semua orang. Aku ni besar, aku ni besar. So, macam mana dia besar? Sama ada dia create worldwide war atau war at home ataupun war dengan diri dia ataupun dia jadi seorang, you know, it can be anything. 
So it comes yeah. back down to the self belief, and that's the lesson right. that I learned in the last two years. So Alhamdulillah, hikmah di sebalik my kemurungan dengan anxiety disorder tu adalah pemahaman tentang myself. I understood, Sarima, why dulu you selalu kecoh? Kenapa you nak lompat dari kapal terbang dengan skydiving tujuh kali? Kenapa you macam tu, macam tu, macam tu? Because I was running from myself. And I'm sure a lot of you watching, you understand what I'm saying ni kan? Uh, and then jerit-jerit ni selalu ada dalam drama orang tulis. Dia macam apa, rebellious, is that a rebellious phase you're going through? I don't think it's rebellious. Don't, don't be so, apa orang kata, punishing to yourself. Because rebel, hmm. rebellious tu adalah perkataan yang negative association. We are not being rebellious. We are only doing what we know because perasaan dalam ni kita tak tahu nak cope. Rasa takut hmm. tu kita dah belajar dari kecil. Jangan minta bantuan. Jangan tunjuk orang kita Betul. sedih. Jangan tunjuk orang kita kita ni kita kekurangan, lemah. kelemah. So hmm. vulnerability tu dah jadi satu kelemahan. Padahal kalau kita berani cakap dengan orang, let's say for example, let's say Donald Trump, okay, I just, I, I'm not hating on Donald Trump, okay, I, this orang, <laughs> you know, I don't know him. But I'm just using an example sebab senang orang nak faham kan dengan karakter dia. Mm-hmm. Tapi nak kata kesian tu, kesian juga sebagai manusia, kita tak tahu apa sebabnya dia jadi macam tu. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, if he had asked everybody for help, for example, what would have happened? Let's say he, 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 he at the end he said, you know, I messed up. I messed up. Everything I said was a lie. It came from a place where I was trying to just be somebody big and I messed up. I think people will have more compassion for him hari ni. Betul tak? Orang akan lebih hmm, macam, betul. oh okay, dia ni sedar sebenarnya. Kesedaran tu yang kita nak tengok dalam seseorang. Bila orang tu sedar hmm. tentang diri dia, kita boleh connect. You know? Selalunya kan bila kita fikir, oh, dia ni tak sedar diri lah. Dari mana that, that came from? Tak sedar diri tu macam negatif ke? Tak sedar diri tu macam sedih sebenarnya. Because hmm. tak sedar diri tu yang menyebabkan dia menyakiti hati dia dan orang lain. And and so we need to be less punishing. That's my end point. That kita kena compassionate pada diri kita. Jangan menghukum sebab sebenarnya kita menghukum diri kita. Because apa yang berlaku Betul. kat orang lain kat luar sana sekarang ni mungkin akan berlaku pada kita esok. So kalau kita menghukum mm-hmm. orang lain, esok kita akan dihukum. So Betul. so let's have more compassion orang kata. Sympathy and empathy lain tau. Sympathy orang oh, kesian kat engkau. Kesian, kesian, kesian. Jangan kesian dengan orang. Kita boleh empathy. Kesian tu dia akan disempower orang tu. Orang tu rasa macam, oh kesian kat aku, oh, kau tolonglah aku. Tapi bila kita mm-hmm. dah tak ada, siapa nak tolong dia? So kita kena bantu orang tapi bukan dengan cara kesian. Kita bantu dengan memberi resources. Ah, ni nombor yang you boleh call. Inilah personal trainer yang boleh bagi harga yang rendah. Ini dia jenis makanan yang you boleh makan. Ah, ataupun ini peer support group yang boleh bantu. Dari situ lah hmm. sebenarnya kita membantu. You know what I mean? Hmm. Sebab yeah. membantu tu kalau short term aja esok dia balik pada situ juga. Most of the millionaires yang menang lottery, they become more in debt after that. Because bantuan tu datang, dia tak tahu nak buat apa. Tapi still ada masalah dalaman. So dia guna semua duit tu untuk beli kereta, nampak besar, nampak cun, nampak ni, nampak apa tu, duit tu hilang. Kenapa? Sebab masalahnya, puncanya bukan sebab tak cukup duit. Tak cukup kesedaran diri dan tak cukup apa orang kata self-awareness. Hmm, betul. So kalau kita tak ubah dari dalam ni, semua yang kita buat pun terang kabut lah. It's the same. Hmm, betul. Hmm. Itulah, bila macam dua orang bertemu, dua orang dengan personality berlainan, hmm. you know people will say that if this person cannot budge, now it's the ball is in your court to ha. change how you think, yeah. how to approach. Because you know if you can't you can't change someone, you have to change yourself. You know, so how do you change yourself is you lebih compassionate, you lebih memahami, mm-hmm. you reach out, mm-hmm. you bagi bantuan, mm-hmm. you empower lah. Just like you said, you empower. Bukannya you nak simpati, tapi no. you membantu is you empower yourself. You know, because you are worth it, you can do it. Yeah. You know, sebab kadang-kadang orang tak ada, itulah orang tak ada courage. They don't have that courage nak macam to go through that breakthrough tau. Sebenarnya orang, setiap orang ada kemampuan, ada kelemahan tetapi ada kekuatan. But people, they don't know that strength that 
they actually have yeah. until you go to an adversity that oh my god nak tak nak I have to. Aku kena I buat to. perubahan. I have to change uh, now. I got no choice. I have to. You know, I'm all my yeah. money is gone, or my spouse has cheated on me. We're getting a divorce, mm. or my child is sick now, or you know, we've lost everything. Ah, dari situ baru macam, what do I do now? So I always say, yeah. you know, you know, that's why. That is why I am still in therapy for so long. I bukannya pergi therapy sebab ada masalah. I pergi therapy supaya tak ada masalah nanti. <laughs> Because <laughs> dia macam maintenance. Kita bukan, kalau boleh pergi cek gigi selalu. Jangan tunggu gigi tu nak putus je baru nak macam, oh my god, only now I need to go to the dentist. Yeah, Or no, whatever, no. we need to take care of ourselves. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually tu. And, and mm. you know, when, when when we take care of ourselves, we take care of the but, ada disclaimer ni. If you are in an abusive situation, you need to put yourself for safety. You don't stay in a situation dengan empathy ke compassion ke apa with somebody who's abusing you. That's a different situation. That's when you need professional assistance and you need sure. intervention. So anybody watching, you know, if you need help, there is an avenue for help and support with Miasa, of course. And also you got Talia and Kasi. And, you know, if, if there's something that's happening to you that is endangering your mental, physical or emotional health, you don't just sit around and wait for the person to change. Yeah. Because that maybe might never come. You get what I mean? True. So you have to remove True. yourself maybe from the situation at least so that ada macam clarity and then boleh take the steps necessary. Right. We we have Miasa, we have Awas, we have Awet. Yeah. You know, um, yes. yes, Awet is, uh, Awet actually is a, it, it, it's an acronym for Absolute Woman Empowerment oh, right. and K is for KL. Yeah, so um, from our side, we also like to empower women, you know. Yes. I, I mean, not only women, everyone actually. Everyone okay. needs that empowerment. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you you have to go through that breakthrough to really know that you have the potential to do a lot of things. You have the capability. Yeah. So um, I and think we are almost running out of time. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and I just before so we wrap up. on the subject of empowerment, you know, um, I'm at the mm. moment. I'm very keen to to empower women, not only with my uh, coaching later this year, inshallah. Um, but so do keep in touch uh, and follow me on social media and on Clubhouse also. I'm going to be part of a, a group called Womentum. Uh, and I'm going to be every mm-hmm. second Thursday at one o'clock on Clubhouse starting August the 12th. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about goals kat situ. So you can join me mm-hmm. on Clubhouse under Womentum group. So with me every second Thursday, start uh, August 12th. And I would like to talk to everyone there. And also I'm an investor for women's uh, businesses. So if you have any pitches or ideas and you know you need some seed or some funding and i think it's bankable and it's feasible you know please get in touch with me um i would love to hear you so empowering women emotionally is my goal empowering women and uh, also special needs education children and parents through head start academy and also through um being an investor and later on this year as a trainer inshallah so this is where i'm at right now and doesn't mean i'm still not a performer I'm still emceeing for many clients, alhamdulillah. Um, but I think this this will help me to be a better emcee, a better performer, because now I understand more. And we can all understand right. more about each other. Right. This is the Sarimah that we have known for so long. Um, you know, when you mention all of this, like, what is it that you can't do, you know? You I can't, <laughs> have been in I the... can't cook. Okay. I don't think so. Sure? Well... You ask Sophia about that. I I mean I can cook, but it's not good. <laughs> okay, like <laughs> I thought you mean that. I thought you mean that. Like cooking is not. I mean, okay, no, that's a lie. It, that's a lie. Me. That's a lie. I, I don't mean that. I I don't have the discipline to carry through because right, I, I, I'm right. too passionate about other things. But I love to watch people cooking and help. Ah, uh, potong potong potong, and and I love <laughs> I love making lasagna and and desserts. So cooking gitu, well, cooking juga lah kan. Cooking, um, tu, cooking. Tu. And and I'm not good at um, I'm not. What am I not good at? There's a lot of things I'm not good at. But it's okay. It's okay. I won't say I'm not good at. This. I I think I'm I'm focused on my passion. That's what we all need to do. Focus on your passion. Yep. Don't worry about the things that you don't do. Be good at what you do. True. I totally agree on that. <laughs> so okay. Um, 
Ah oh, itulah. Oh. I macam okay so sempat pula dia By kan. By the way, I want to thank all the sponsors for the the pack that you sent me. I don't have a list with me. Oh, so oh. um if you can name out some of the sponsors for me because I saw the cookies. Yeah. I saw the the fitness like, cookies. I saw apa ni? Who who else is in there? There's so much food. Okay, I I'll just I'll just do a uh, quick shout out. I would like to thank uh, Alpine Integrated Solutions, Anytime Fitness Sunway Putra Mall, mm-hmm. which myself and my husband we co-own it. Uh, Golden Treats Enterprise, also myself and my husband, and we have Kuli Hut. They they prepare all these beautiful home decors, and our esteemed brand partners at Good Fit, which is Fit Jar Superfood. You got wow. all those um yeah yes. freshly made salad. I'm gonna eat it now after this. Sedap sangat. And it's really, really healthy. Um, and then we have <laughs> mice hair care is for your hair. And also the protein cookie. Profit oh my God. protein cookie. The pro- protein cookie, I'm like, tak sabar. I just want to add in because someone said about the needy. Miasa provides help for the B40s. Please spread the news. Essentials, yeah. food and counselling for free. Okay? Right. So I know there's a lot of people out there. They need a lot of help. Uh, so let's spread that news. Okay, and before I forget, uh, I just want to uh, ask everyone who is watching, you know, don't forget to hashtag us, um, Awet uh, Movement, uh, Miasa, and uh, Awas, and Woman Empowerment, Believe in Yourself and Living a Good Life, right? Okay. So, uh, if you have any questions for both of us, just drop us a DM, you know, can message uh, Sheikh Puan Sarima about, you know, all those things that she mentioned about um, the financial funding and, you know, if you want to know about Head Start, My want to know anything that, yeah, all the coaching, you know, actually, number one thing is empowerment. Empower yourself, empower others, you know, just reach out. If you need any help, you need any support, Miasa is there, Awas is there, Awas is here also as well for you. Yeah. So, thank you so much Sheikh Puan Sarima for thank today. You. Rasa sekejapnya satu jam cakap right. dengan you it's Satu like, jam ke? I feel like it's been 15 <laughs> minutes ke apa Macam tak cukup yeah. ke? Kan? Yeah but thank you so much for your time And you know I know you're a very busy woman But thank you so much for your enthusiasm Your energy Kita semua suka best Best agak you know, Don't worry everyone It's This will pass Okay that's what I want to say You know we, yeah. we feel like right now I feel like so terperangkap I get it and so many things like I've, my income and everything is affected. We're all affected in our own ways, different yeah. ways. Um, but it is, it is temporary. Nothing has ever been permanent and it can't be. So the ups and downs will be temporary. It will pass. Inshallah, we just need to get more people vaccinated and faster. That's what I believe. Yes. Um, let's save true. this thought, Rita, Boleh, so we can share it together. Yes. Okay. How do I save it? Let me when see. When it ends, if... you can save. Kau tak silap eh? Ah, okay. Yeah. So, do I press this? Dah, I ni memang noob sikit. I think it's this one. Sebelum kita ah. berakhir. <laughs> Go live in a room. Sekejap. Which one is it eh? Um, um, no, once we've closed, they will ask you. Ah, okay. Hmm. So, okay. I think that's all for today. Thank you so much, Ip Wan Sarima. It was nice talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you. And I will and see we wish you all the best. Yes, we wish all the best to you, yeah? Yes, keep in touch everyone. You know how to contact okay. me. Okay. Alright. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. See, See you. you. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. I will let you close so that you can save it. Okay.